In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use Google and only Google to find an entire month's worth of content topics within about five minutes. This is part of a tutorial series where I'm showing you different keyword research methods all the way from free to high price tools like Ahrefs and SEMrush to really drill down and find your topics uh, that are going to help you build authority in Google. Let's go ahead and jump into the first tutorial, which is using Google to find a month's worth of topics in just a few minutes. First things first, I'm going to give an overview of this and as well as some best practices to make sure that you get the best results. First of all, I'm in an incognito tab in Google Chrome. So if you can use a private tab or, or whatever browser that you use usually has uh, incognito or a uh, private browser tab, I would definitely suggest using that because your previous searches will not uh, corrupt or, or you know, manipulate them in any way if you use an incognito tab. Then I want you to think about your website. Primarily, this is going to be for very, very new websites. So maybe you're a business uh, site that you just set up a blog and now you want to get some of that sort of inbound traffic through SEO uh, to better sell your, your products or services. Or maybe you have a blog, but it's got like maybe a couple dozen, maybe 30 or 40 uh, blog posts on it and it's not getting much traction. Or even sites with 100 or more blog posts that are getting some decent traction, but you want to break ground on a new topic. So say um, most of these tutorials are going to involve cars in some way. So maybe you sell a whole lot of uh, uh, Honda posts or you have a whole lot of Honda blog posts and that's driving traffic, but you don't have any Hyundai blog posts. Well, this is an entirely new category. So this, this method would also help you out in that uh, particular instance. So if you are a new site, or you're not getting much traction with your existing blogs, or you have an established site, but you're going to move into an entirely different topic or almost entirely new niche in and of itself. This is great for that. Since I said these are gonna be primarily car related, I'm gonna type in a search topic that most of these, uh, most sites are not gonna rank for, at least without years and years of SEO. And you can already see the benefit of using in, an incognito tab because these are all just trending topics. It doesn't have any previous searches at all. So I'm just going to do car parts. Unless you are like an auto zone or a major um, auto parts manufacturer or seller like carpart.com, uh, carparts.com, rock auto, uh, or like Napa and those kind of things, you're not going to rank for car parts. However, there is a way for sites like yours, like like you know any any small niche site, to potentially. And there's never any guarantee with Google, right? But to potentially rank on the car parts top ten in the people also ask section. We've already covered the, the sites that are in the top ten: carparts.com, Rock Auto. But look at this question here. What are the main parts of a car? If I click this, several beautiful things happen. First. It's this site, which is nowhere on the top 10, just ranking strictly for car parts. However, it is ranking in the top 10 because it answers this people always also ask question, which is what are the main parts of car? The second beautiful thing that happens, if you didn't notice, a few more questions were added just by clicking. See, so watch this. I'll click what are original car parts called? And then look, now we have these questions that weren't there before. So. The first thing I want you to realize is the people also ask is almost on every single search term. The second thing I would like you to realize is that you can search for really big keywords that you would probably never otherwise rank for to get the people also ask that give you great potential topics. So I search for car parts. That is what we call a commercial intent keyword. What that means is the people who search for car parts are looking to buy car parts. To be honest, they're probably trying to find those reputable car parts stores so they can maybe find a new taillight or a new carburetor for their vehicle. However, some of them also have questions, and those are the people that Google is trying to reach with this people also ask section. However, if you notice, these questions are a little bit more what we call informational intent, meaning that people are trying to find out a bit of information. So what are the main parts of a car? Well, a steel frame, that's the, the major part of a car, right? That has nothing to do with car parts. Hardly anybody searching for car parts is looking for a steel frame. However, 
we can assume millions and millions of people click on these people also ask questions. What are original par car parts called? Original equipment parts, OEM. Well, that opened up what means OEM car or what is OEM full form? What does OEM parts stand for? These are all great potential topics for a blog who wants to get people interested in car parts to their blog. And again, this goes for any niche, any market. You can search a high commercial intent keyword and you should be able to pull up dozens of people also ask questions for that. And you can simply get 20, 50, 100 topics just by clicking the questions and getting more questions added to the bottom. That's one way to do it. There's also another way to do it. As you kind of go towards this keyword rabbit hole that Google is taking you on, for instance, we found out what are original car parts called? We saw this acronym OEM and it started giving us what does uh, what means OEM car. If we click these specifically, it's going to give us more OEM and ODM. It's giving us more terms that we could potentially rank for. So there are a couple of things you could do. You can keep clicking the, the, the ones that sound the most interesting to you, and it's going to keep giving you acronyms. It's going to keep giving you questions uh, that you could put on your blog in the form of articles. Or you can take these terms and then do another search. For, for instance, let's just do OEM and ODM right here. And then I'm going to put that into the search. And then look here. What, it, what do OEM stand for? What does? What does OEM mean in text? What is an OEM example? Um, is OEM a brand? Is OEM original or fake shoes? Is Apple an OEM? And then, you know, you're, you're getting into more content and it's a little bit even more niche than the original topic of car parts. So you can do both. You can actually just remain on car parts and use the people also ask section to find 20, 50, 100 topics that you think would go great for your blog. Or you could uh, subdivide that and drive deeper into the research by finding an entire topic like maybe OEM. You could cover that topic very, very well. As you can see, I have a side by side um, browser tab open. One side is our original car parts um, search where we found all of those great people also ask questions. And on the right, I just have a simple Google sheet uh, pulled up where I'm going to copy and paste the best article titles that I think I want to use. So how many parts are there in a car? I'm just going to highlight this, go over here, paste it, but I'm also going to um, take off the question mark. It's very important to take off the question mark. And I'm just going to add um, probably five or six of these, and I'm going to actually run them through the content at scale AI writing tool and show you what we come up with. Okay, so I have five topics here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to download this as a CSV. So I just click download as a CSV that goes into my downloads and then I'm going to actually upload that into content at scale. Okay, so I am in the back end of content at scales AI writing tool and I have clicked to add content and I have just added our CSV with those five keywords. Now I'm just going to click add content. I'm going to select them and then nope, not this one and then prepare all five of those. And it says five keywords have been added, check back in a few minutes. So I'm not gonna make you wait for that, but it is only gonna be a few minutes and then we'll come back and check the AI's writing work. So Content at Scale's AI writing tool has written all five of the articles. It took less than 10 minutes for all five articles to be generated. And what you see here is all written by Content at Scale's AI writing tool. I haven't taken out a character, I haven't added any characters, I haven't spaced anything. I haven't done anything at all in terms of formatting or writing in this article. Quickly, before I scroll through the content, I will tell you a little bit about this dashboard. Uh, so first off, uh, we have the title, the slug, so this is what it would be on your website, uh, and then we have the primary keyword that we're trying to rank for, and then we have a meta description, which is gener generated by the AI. 
here we have this uh, section called select featured image. We uh, pull in royalty free images from across the web. And then you can just choose a featured image uh, and then it will show up right there. And then over here you have some signals. So all of these things right here, words, paragraphs, headings, and media are all um, the average of the top results. So this is what we actually have in our editor right now, 1,493 words. And then we have uh, the average of the top 10 article between 916 and 1,012 words. So we are over that limit. So you can actually take some out if you want, or you can leave it in there and have a more thorough article. And of course, paragraphs there are 56 paragraphs in this article. The 13 to 15 is the average reign. And basically what that is, is we, we try to add a lot of extra space. It tends to make people continue to go down the page further and keep them engaged longer if they don't have to read big wordy paragraphs. So that's kind of a, a native function inherent to our AI writing tool. And then in terms of headings, there are 12 headings as opposed to the average of five. And media, this would be obviously images, uh, GIFs, um, you know, uh, things of that nature. The average is two uh, and the feature image um, we don't we don't actually count that uh, over here on this side you will see the uh, other keywords so this is like semantic keywords uh, natural language processing keywords that you're gonna want to add in sometimes like we see here the the question is so succinct and so individually covered by search engines it's the only super important keyword to include uh, but if there were more you would see this on on the side of all of them so seven to 22 times is the average number of times this particular term is in the average ranking content. And you can see that it is currently in the content twice. Down below that, we have this on-page SEO checklist that talks about the title, the meta, the URL. Uh, it talks about you know whether or not the first paragraph includes the primary keyword. Uh, and it has several other features. Now, if you uh, wanted to get this completely on page ready, you would want to ensure that this checklist is as complete as possible before publishing it. But that said, let's get into what the AI actually wrote. Now, like I said, I have not added or taken away anything from this article. And you can see that there is a very short intro and then it goes straight into a table of contents that is automatically generated into your article. If you have a scaling, or an agency plan with content at scale, this includes a WordPress integration. And with the WordPress in integration, this table of contents automatically shows up in your article, in your WordPress dashboard. And when you publish the article, readers can then click to whichever section they wanna read. Like for instance, if they wanna read the why you should only use genuine or OEM car parts, uh, they don't really wanna read the rest of the article, but they wanna click down to that section. They would click on it, it would automatically take them to that section and that signals engagement in terms of like Google, in terms of someone on your site is actually engaging with your content and staying on there for a long time, which is a great signal uh, for search engines. So then after the table of contents, it gets into those sections. Uh, so you have H2s, um, you have um, bolded sections, uh, you can even have lists. Most articles will include lists, either bullet pointed or numbered. But since this is 10 reasons, then there are in fact 10 reasons. And like I said, I didn't, I didn't touch this. Um, more H2s and then more sections as well. And then it also has an FAQ um, right here, which includes all of the frequently asked questions about original car parts. Uh, and then it includes the conclusion. This was written entirely by an AI writer. You didn't have to sit there with an AI writing assistant and start a sentence and then maybe it write 100 words or 200 words. This was completely done by just putting in a topic or keyword. Hopefully, if you're already part of the content at scale beta, uh, you're ready now to look for keywords and input those into the AI writer and get started. If you haven't signed up for the beta yet, please be sure to go to contentatscale.ai forward slash beta, B-E-T-A, and get signed up for your uh, spot in our new beta. Thanks.